Dimka Brahmjal, uh, the English media myth, is my is my book and also the the topic of the talk. How did I come across uh, this topic? A lot of people ask me. I, I myself went to an English medium school in India, and my first shock. Uh, that and I also all of these myths that I'm talking about are myths that I myself carry. So part of it is my own education that I'm sharing. How I came, you know, how I overcame these. So, सबसे पहला झटका मुझे तब लगा जब मैं Microsoft में काम करता था और मेरी एक टीम थी जो इजराइल में थी. तो जब मैं इजराइल में गया, हाइफा में गया उनके ऑफिस में. So I was in Haifa visiting Microsoft, and what I was surprised to find was that. Microsoft Haifa, they were using Hebrew. They were using Hebrew for design documentation. They were using Hebrew for their PowerPoints. They were using Hebrew for email. All of their internal email in Microsoft Haifa was in Hebrew language. And again, this was a big surprise because uh, you know I didn't even know this was part of my own team. The person who was interfacing with me obviously was speaking, uh, was using English because I was in Redmond, based in Redmond. But their team internally would use Hebrew. So. This was my first shock. सबसे पहले झटका ये लगा उसके बाद में घूमते घूमते भारत के गांव में पहुंच गया वेंट टू सम इंडियन विलेजेस एंड आई आई क्यू टेस्ट विद मी वट कैंड ऑफ आई क्यू टेस्ट दीज आर सिम्बॉलिक आई क्यू टेस्ट सो दे वॉज नो लैंग्वेज यूज दे वॉज सिम्बल दिज अ टेस्ट कॉल एन एट एन एन ए टी दैट आई टुक फ्रॉम द यू एस एन एट एन आई टुक देयर और मेरी तब मंशा थी कि मैं गांव में हुनर है ये ढूंढने निकला था मैं मैं चाहता था कि मैं एक टैलेंटेड बच्चों का स्कूल चलाऊं जो कि गांव से टैलेंटेड बच्चे ढूंढकर स्कूल चलाऊं तो मैंने कहा कि अच्छा स्कूल चलाने से पहले टेस्ट कर लेते हैं कि कितना टैलेंट है नहीं है किस टाइप के बच्चे हैं वहां पर सो आई टुक दिस टेस्ट एंड आई गेव इट टू मेनी विलेजेस इन इंडिया एंड इन हरियाणा इन राजस्थान उत्तराखंड आई वेट एंड आई गेव दिस टेस्ट एंड आई वॉज वेरी सरप्राइज टू फाइंड that the village and also they gave this uh, test in jaipur to some city students and also to my daughter's school in seattle surprised to find that the village children outscored urban indian children and also us children in iq at least in my sample which was not very big it was a few hundred uh, total students over maybe 10 schools something like that uh, so whether it's a completely scientific result or not it was still interesting that there was all this talent that was there in the in the village setting सो so, करते करते मैं जब जा रहा था तो मेरा ड्राइवर है उसने कहा कि सर आप सब जगह जा रहे हो वो हरियाणा का था हमारे गांव तो गए नहीं तो मेरे गांव नहीं गए आप तो मैंने कहा कि चलो आपके गांव चलते हैं तो उनके गांव में जब पहुंचा मैं उसके तो उसने आवाज लगा के बच्चों को इकट्ठा किया गर्मी का महीना था जून का लू बह रही थी सो इन द मिडल ऑफ द समर मंथ I did this IQ test in a very sort of a dusty setting. Not uh, I remembered. I was remembering my daughter's school. You know, such a proper setting where the children had formally given the test, and here in this dusty setting they were doing it. And I found in the village that after I tabulated the results, that 33 percent of the children were above the 90th percentile. So if it was according to the norm, only 10 percent should have been above the 90th percentile. So you know, that was another shock. I was like, "Are?" सो so, मैंने उनके प्रिंसिपल से बात की उनसे बातचीत करनी शुरू की आई टॉक टू द प्रिंसिपल और उन्होंने पूछा क्या आपके बच्चे तो बहुत होशियार है कहाँ 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 जाते हैं क्या भविष्य रहता है इनका तो उसने कहा जी क्या बताऊँ मेरे बच्चे ना गणित में बड़े तेज हैं इनको अंग्रेजी नहीं समझ आती तो आठवीं के बाद वो छोड़ देते हैं पढ़ाई क्योंकि आगे की सारी पढ़ाई अंग्रेजी में सो इस ड्रॉप आउट आफ्टर एट ग्रेड बिकॉज द future education is all in english all the higher education is in english most of the competitive exams are only in english and these children who are very smart in mathematics they are very smart in reasoning but they have no environment to learn english in the village you know there's no there's no setting there's no family environment even the teachers don't know english that are there and so they have no environment to learn english and because they are being subjected uh, they don't have any other option for higher studies for engineering for medicine a lot of them drop out and those are the people then we then make into our servants and uh, and taxi drivers and all these people because that is the only option we have left for them uh, we have said that you cannot uh, you cannot progress so that is the uh, introduction to the brahmjal so what are the myths what are the myths that we hold one of the uh, 
the common uh, conversations when I go in India and say this, they say the whole world is using English. Why are you taking us backward? Why are you talking about Indian languages when the whole world is using English? So the question is, ki sara sansar angrezi ka prayog kar raha hai? Ye sach mein? Agar aap aankhne dekho to, keval paanch pradishat log hai dunia mein jo jin ki mool bhaasha angrezi hai. Aur lagbhag chaya pradishat aise hai jo dousri bhaasha ki tarah angrezi ka prayog kar raha hai. To, only about 10% of the people in the world know English. And out of the 90%, there are lots of highly educated, technically savvy, wealthy people who, who know almost no English. And there are lots of countries in which you will find, you, will, you can go into a very, um, you know, elite place and there will be no English, they will, they will not know any English. So, then I did a, just a back of the envelope calculation. I said, okay, let me look at the top 20 countries by GDP per capita and the bottom 20 countries in GDP per capita. B sabse amir desh or B sabse garib desh. Or bahut chote desh se zahe Singapore ya yo jo bahut population mein 5 million se kam the, aise desho ko maine chhod diya usme. Jo kuch substantial size ke jo desh the. To usme maine dekha, in the top 20 countries, all of the top 20 countries were using their own languages for higher education. They were using the mass language of the people for higher education. And out of the bottom 20 countries, 18 out of 20 were not using their own languages for higher education. So, every country that was developed and that was progressing was using their own language for higher education, for science and for technology, for the, for the government systems. And the poorest countries were those that were using some colonial language often, you know, there'd be English or Dutch or French or you know, one of those languages uh, was being Spanish. So um, that was also a very interesting uh, viewpoint that lang people who are investing in the resource development, the people who are investing in the resource development, whether it's a chicken or egg problem, maybe they have the resources to invest in their language or maybe the language investment is causing development. We don't know, we are not saying that correlation is causality here. But we are just noting this point that all of the developed countries are using their own languages for higher education and for, um, for the system, for the court system, for all these systems. Whereas uh, in, the, in the poorest countries, the courts were also often run in some colonial language. So examples of these uh, developed countries, uh, what is this one on the right? Yes, subse, upar wala kya hai? Hebrew. Hebrew, haan. Technion Institute hai, jo ki uh, Hebrew madhyam hai. Aur humari IIT se kahin zyada uska world mein rank hai as a technical institute. Balki hum Bharat mein maha se uh, hathiyar lete hai, Israel se advanced technology lete hai. Aur us sara kaam Hebrew mein karte hai. If you go to the Technion website, they will they have an instruction there saying that if you want to study here, you must know Hebrew and if you don't know Hebrew, then there is a course that you can take in the beginning and once you know Hebrew, then you can enroll in the institute. So, it is a Hebrew as the medium is Hebrew. And what is the one on the left? Japanese. Yeah, so Japanese is the University of Tokyo. It's one of the top uh, universities in medical science. In fact, Japan has won a series of Nobel Prizes, um, you know, in, in, in related fields. And they all do their um, their advanced research work using Japanese medium, um, and it's worth you know you can go to go to the web and check how many Nobel prizes. In fact, I have a slide later on maybe uh, how many Nobel prizes Japan has won only in the last ten years um, using using their own language. So, and this one at the bottom, left bottom, German. German. Yeah, German. So this is German. They are doing robotics work. You can go and look at um, the work they're doing. They're using uh, German as the medium, and this is, um, yeah, French. Uh, this is the management institute, which also actually also operates in English, but they also have a French program. Another uh, aspect of India today is that English has become a language of status. So, if you are having a luxury car advertisement, what well, this is a advertisement for uh, what car? Audio, right? So, if you go to Bharat and you go to Bilbord, you can see the Audio and 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 the Audio 
तो आपको सबके सब जो चाहे लग्जरी गुड्स हो या उसके सब भी आपको चीनी भाषा में मिलेगा अंग्रेजी से स्टेटस इंग्लिश इज नॉट इक्वल टू वेल्थ इंग्लिश इज नॉट इक्वल टू स्टेटस एंड दिस इज ट्रू फॉर मेनी ऑफ द कंट्रीज इवन वेर यू देर लर्निंग इंग लाइक जापान you know people are kind of fond of english it's like almost a a pet thing for them oh i have to learn english of course their english is terrible but it doesn't hasn't stopped them from making any technical progress i mean hasn't stopped them from from advancing technically but more importantly there is no status in japanese society if you speak english right it has no relevance for for status in the society so this is one um, aspect that um, has uh, really impacted india another example is china Uh, the one uh, person on the left is my daughter, actually. So we gone to uh, to China for um, uh, an extended trip and went to different cities. So China, me, me, Beijing, me, restaurant, me, yeah. Or what a tourist restaurant, tha, kafi achha uh, restaurant tha. So I'm thinking that tourist restaurant me, kafi achha status ke restaurant me, to koi na koi Englishi janta hoga. But we were surprised. Or I'm not. Ye bhi suna tha. भारत में ये कहा जाता है कि चीन वाले तो सब लोग अंग्रेजी सीख रहे हैं चीन में तो सब बहुत अंग्रेजी चल रही है आप क्यों छोड़ रहे हो अंग्रेजी को बट इन दिस हाई एंड रेस्टोरेंट फ्रॉम द वेट स्टाफ टू द मैनेजर ऑफ द रेस्टोरेंट नो बडी स्पोक वर्ड ऑफ इंग्लिश दे डोट नो एनी इंग्लिश वट सो एवर एंड इवन दो देर मेनी टूरिस्ट देर बट वट एर दू दे प्रेजेंटेड देयर फोन टू अस एंड दे आस्ट अस टू टाइम आवर ऑर्डर and when we typed our order in english they pressed a button and they had baidu translate and it translated it into chinese and they uh, happily giggled and they took our order and they went away okay so they had no problem using high you know and using the technology in fact a waiter in in india in a dhaba might not know how to use google translate to do the translation and he would be expected aaj dhabe mein bhi log hiring kar rahe to keh rahe the ko angrezi aati ya nahi aati tab hum theko dhabe mein lenge और ये बड़ा उच्च श्रेणी का वहां पर रेस्टोरेंट चला रहे हैं और उनको अंग्रेजी की आवश्यकता नहीं लग रही जबकि उसमें टूरिस्ट भी आ रहे हैं तो भारत में मानसिकता हो गई है एक मानसिकता हो गई है कि आपको अंग्रेजी नहीं आती तो आपको चपरासी का भी हम जॉब नहीं देंगे आपको अंग्रेजी नहीं आती तो हम आपको वेटर का भी जॉब नहीं देंगे क्योंकि समाओ अंग्रेजी के बिना हमारा काम नहीं चल सकता जबकि सब देशों की ऐसी सोच नहीं इनफैक्ट another example i was skiing in uh, switzerland in zermatt again very high end swiss chalet and their menus are all in swiss german you know so they they have no problem being very comfortable saying that this is our like this this is what we have you don't deal with it <laughs> right but we are so bent over backwards uh, in saying no 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 somehow we have to cater to everybody and in the process not even have our own language like so the second um, एस्पेक्ट थर्ड एस्पेक्ट रादर जब मैं भारत में ये बात करता हूँ तो लोग मुझे कहते हैं जी आप साहब आप क्या बात कर रहे हो आजकल तो गांव का बच्चा भी अंग्रेजी स्कूल में जा रहा है और सब लोग अंग्रेजी पढ़ना चाह रहे हैं आप उनको अंग्रेजी से क्यों डिप्राइव कर रहे हो आप क्यों हटा रहे हो एवरीबडी वॉन्ट्स टू लर्न इंग्लिश दिस इज दी अदर स्टोरी और एवरीबडी वॉन्ट्स टू स्टडी इन इंग्लिश मीडियम रादर बट इफ आई लुक एट द डेटा If I look at the tech, top ten newspapers in India, for instance, there's only one newspaper which is an English newspaper. Okay, the rest of the nine newspapers are all uh, Indian language newspapers, whether it's Hindi or Malayalam or Tamil. <laughs> so, by circulation, there is only one newspaper in the top ten which is uh, which is English. That means that people have a choice. Here, it's not the government which is imposing a language. People have a real choice. They prefer to read in their own language. If you look at television channels, it's even worse. You will find that English is not even one percent uh, of the television watching in India. So if people have a choice, they neither want to read English nor do they want to listen to English. When there is a real choice, but we haven't given that choice, and that is the part of the problem. Dusri baat ye hai, ye bhi ye bhi mujhe kaha jata hai ki acha aap Anglizi ka bada hua dekho ji, the the ये तो बहुत देर हो चुकी है अब तो कुछ बदलाव नहीं हो चुका बहुत देर हो चुकी है सब सब हमारा जो ये सिस्टम है ये अंग्रेजी में चल रहा है आप कैसे बदलोगे सो द इनएविटेबिलिटी ऑफ इंग्लिश एंड आई स्पीक अबाउट दिस इन माय बुक द मिथ ऑफ द इनएविटेबिलिटी देयर इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग केनियन राइटर द गुगी वाथियोंगो हु वाज रिटन अ बुक कॉल्ड डीकोलोनाइजिंग द माइंड एंड वन ऑफ द थिंग्स ही सेज वन ऑफ द वेज इन व्हिच कोलोनाइजेशन Um, of language happens and colonization in general happens 
is the inevitability of that particular colonial language. And that English is inevitable is part of the colonial mind, that there is no other option, that this is the only smart choice, right? So this inevitability is part of that, becomes part of that thinking. So, dusra kya kehta ki ab to bahut der ho gayi hai, the horse has already bolted, what's the point of locking the stable, we cannot, uh, we cannot actually go back now. But if you look at the percentage, actually closer to independence, almost 30% of the newspapers were English newspapers. 30% of the circulation of newspapers was, was English. And that percentage has actually come down to about uh, 12 to 14% now. So, as a percentage, English has actually declined in terms of the reading population. Why? Because the literacy has come up in other languages. And so because of the literacy coming up, uh, English has declined. And the same phenomenon is happening in the internet. Today, in the internet in India, Indian languages are already uh, surpassing English uh, in usage. So the same phenomenon that happened, is, and it started off, the, the, the Indian internet was mostly English, and now that is starting to decline as a percentage. So all of the fields we see that when people have, have consumer choice, that they are opting for non-English languages. But why is it that in education then they want English medium? That is the, the next uh, sort of puzzle we have to answer. Uh, but before that, we'll take a little uh, little tour of these countries. Karte karte, I went to 35 countries that people are using the language of the language. Because my knowledge has risen up to Israel, and I had a lot of interest in Paryatan. So I went to many countries to see how people are using the language of the language. और लगभग हर देश में मैंने ये पाया कि जो भी विकसित देश है वो अपनी भाषा का प्रयोग कर रहा है और कोई भी देश जितनी भारत की दुर्दशा है अपनी भाषा को मारने में लगे हुए हैं उतनी शायद किसी की भी नहीं होगी मैं थाई देश में गया और थाई देश का बड़ा मजेदार आता है थाई 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 देश को हम क्या बोलते हैं थाईलैंड थाईलैंड राइट वो अपने देश अपने देश को क्या बोलते हैं थाई प्रतीक थाई प्रदेश प्रदेश का वो दर का दर बन जाता है हाँ तो थाई प्रदेश या थाई प्रदेश ऐसा कुछ बोलते हैं जो प्रदेश पे आधारित शब्द है तो क्योंकि उनकी भाषा संस्कृत से आई है सारे जो शब्द हैं वो संस्कृत से मिले जुले शब्द हैं लेकिन हमने क्योंकि वो छोड़ और क्या है कि उनका बड़ा नाता रहा है हमारे से लेकिन हम अब जबकि वो शब्द थाई प्रदेश है, थाई प्रदेश से आया है, और और उनका हमारा बहुत नाता रहा है। So we've had long civilizational links, you know, with all of Southeast Asia. There is a huge influence of Sanskrit. There's a whole huge influence of Tamil in a lot of these languages. If you look at the Southeast Asian languages, but because we have abandoned it, these 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 nations are kind of feeling like orphans. So even though Thailand is doing its higher education in Thai language. Earlier it used to be this part of this vast Indic ecosystem of knowledge exchange, right? And now it is feeling like it is an isolated uh, spot, even though it is still working in its own language and trying to move its own language. So not only are we, have we um, um, hit on the Indian civilization in India, but we have also uh, cut off our links with the entire Indic ecosystem as a result of being part of the uh, the Anglosphere. Same thing, uh, just a few quick examples here. This is a uh, library in Japan. Uh, robot books check out robot books check out It's a more technically advanced it is a more technically advanced society in everyday life. It is a more technically advanced society than the United States. Right? So the language has not been a barrier to technology adoption whatsoever. In fact, they have they have advanced by leaps and bounds uh, in, in technology. So as a cue, why is it that Japan advanced so much in technology? In fact, some, there was also a study I read between difference between China and Japan and why China lagged for some years behind Japan in technology adoption. And one of the reasonings even was that in the Japanese case, they translated works from English. The Japanese themselves translated works from English and had authentic translations of the works and then they developed that knowledge further. Whereas in the Chinese case, they outsourced that translation 
to uh, people uh, from from uh, from the west who knew Chinese. So then the translation was less than native, and because of that less than native translation, they, their understanding uh, was was actually decreased. There's a very interesting story here. So. Again, a lot of this requires far more uh, academic work than I have done in the book. My book is, is more in a popular vein. So, uh, you know, any academics or other people who are here or are listening to the talk later on, this is worth investigating. But there is definitely a link of language to understanding knowledge in native terms and, and progress. For instance, even when Arabic science was at its peak, at a time when Arab science was very high, they used to pay the translate, and you, they used to get manuscripts, you know, from India, from China, from all these places, science, manuscripts, mathematics, you know, there was a lot of transmission numbers, we know what happened, other things happened. So there was a lot of transmission of knowledge, and they used to pay the translator the weight of the book in gold to translate it into Arabic, because it was important for them to get it into Arabic, so that then they could develop that knowledge, and then they could own that knowledge. Right? And then, in fact, you find a lot of Arabic works, they have done an amalgam. They have taken uh, from different sources and they have done an amalgam and then, then sort of produced a synthesis of it in Arabic. You know, a lot of their mathematics is like that also. So, you find that the Arab sciences that speak when they are really investing in this translation issue. In Europe, a similar phenomenon happens. So, what is the language of uh, Europe in... Um, uh, like before the Enlightenment Revolution, before the Scientific Revolution, what is the language of European universities? Latin, right? Latin, a little bit of Greek, but mostly Latin, because the church was uh, was running the uh, the universities, and the church liturgical language was Latin, and the higher educational language was also Latin, connected with theology uh, of the church also. So, when Europe shifts from Latin higher education to the vernaculars, Right? Europe shifts from Latin to teaching higher education in the vernaculars of the, you know, Italian and French and, and German and, um, and English and Spanish and so on and so forth, is when its rapid advancement starts to happen from a knowledge civilization standpoint as well. Right? So there is almost no, um, as I said, even in contemporary times you find all of the countries that have progressed are progressing and using their own languages. Even in, in, in ancient times you find the same phenomenon. That knowledge societies always flourish when the, the knowledge is available in the common language of the people. So when I when I first started on this journey, Mirko, पता तो लग रहा था कि हाँ जैसे हिब्रू के लोग हैं वो वो इजराइल के लोग हैं वो हिब्रू इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं. So I had some sense this is happening, but my English mind still refused to believe it. Like oh how can you teach programming in Chinese? It's impossible. How can you learn networking in Japanese? <coughs> So then I started collecting books. I used to go to these countries. I used to walk into a library and take photographs of these books. I used to ask them, 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 where are computers and books, where are networking books, I will go and see them. So this is a TCPIP networking book. Just the TCPIP part is English. The whole book is in Japanese. Uh, and on this right, uh, what is this book? Maybe it's too small to read. It's a, it's a C++ programming, okay? So, look at that programming in Japanese. Programming in Japanese is not happening. There are many keywords in English. But there are many keywords in English. There are many keywords in English. There are many keywords in the language. In C++ itself, there's only, there's only the tens, the keywords. It's not even a hundred. But, of course, you have other functions and other things. So, a few phrases and words you can learn in English, but the entire explanation Everything is in Japanese, right? Even the strings that there are there, hello world is a Japanese hello world uh, for programmers and they might uh, appreciate that joke. Okay, so in any case, so they are, this is how they are studying. This is how the Chinese are studying. This is how the Japanese are studying. This is how the Russians are studying. You know, so all of these countries, in fact, it's funny because India regards all these countries as high-tech countries. We import all our arms from Russia, from, from Israel, from all these countries. Uh, we are importing a bullet train from Japan, the technology. And then we keep saying English is the our advantage. What is this great advantage that we have to keep importing technology from non-English countries? <laughs> so we have to question this other myth about the English advantage. Because I find no evidence of English advantage. People keep saying English advantage, but the evidence of English advantage is very sparse. Similarly, 
Uh, another question that happens is people say, okay, fine, but how will you, you know, you, you travel to all these countries, you must have used English to travel to all these countries. English is a language of tourism, at least you have to agree. So, of course, the Japanese, all their tour books are in Japanese. And the Japanese are very avid world travelers. They go all over the world, they don't need English for it. They will have local tour guides who are also speaking Japanese, and they will take them around. Okay, and they, they, they are happy clicking photographs and, and, uh, and conversing in Japanese. In fact, this was something I said at Google a couple of days ago, and um, uh, I'm sure you'll appreciate it. Aaj Google Translate mein aap ek bhaasha se dousri bhaasha ko anuwaad kar sakte ho. Toh meinne bola ki das saal mein aap agar Japan jaoge, aur aap Gujarati mein bologe, toh unko Japani sunegi. Aur wo agar Japani mein bolenge, toh aapke kaal mein Gujarati sunegi. So, English as a language of global tourism is going to decline within the next 10 years because auto translate technology is going to be good enough that it can do speech recognition of the language, it can do the translation and it can do the speech output in, in the language of your choice. <laughs> Already the, most of the technical parts are there, it just has to be, be sort of get over a final touch. So 10 years might actually be, a lot of my time my technology prediction have been too pessimistic, it happens even faster than, than one, one imagines. So, the, even today, if you travel, then maybe the custom officer or immigration officers, they are in English. But So, English as a global language of tourism is going to decline. As the United States as an economic power, as a percentage of world GDP declines, the importance of English is also going to decline. And this is also inevitable. If you look at the trend, if you look at the rise of China and Japan, I'm sorry, China and India, rather. Um, then, you, you know, if you look at the 1700s, we know that India and, uh, and China were all about 70% of the world GDP. Okay, this is the, the famous study, many of you might have seen this. And... Angus Madison. Yeah, Angus Madison study, right. So, later on, at, the, at its peak, the US was never more than 25% of the world GDP. Right? And this percentage is going to come down in the future as, as China takes a big, bigger chunk and as India does. So, that was another force for English in the world. That force is going to decline, so English is going to decline. Technology will enable auto-translation, so English is going to decline. What is the one, uh, one force that is keeping in, will keeping in English alive in the world? India. So, so if, if English remains an important language for tomorrow, it is only because India is obsessed with it. Sure. Right? And India is, is pushing hundreds and millions of people into English. So English is not saving India. India is saving English. At a great cost to itself, at a great civilizational cost, at a great development cost to itself, it is, uh, it is in this Save English project. Although it thinks that English is saving it. Three examples, this Egypt, uh, we can go through it. This is another example where, you know, in Hindi we, we call Egypt Misra. And this is what they call their country. If you go to Egypt, they call their country Misra. <laughs> right? But we learn it as Egypt, uh, especially because I went to an English school. We learn it as Egypt. So even our old civilizational links con continuously get broken because we were understanding them on native terms. We had a linkage to them much before the English came. But now we have a barrier to understanding the other people. All our diplomats are taught, uh, are using English and they are, they are thinking in English. So, and this is the famous library of Alexandria that was burnt down that they have now redone. Um, and in fact, in the back you will see, you know, just like palm leaf manuscripts, there used to be the papyr papyrus manuscripts. And so they have the library, they have reconstructed and they have given an image of the papyrus manuscripts in the back just to get a feeling for their ancient library that was burned down. And again, if I look at the, the catalog, I asked for programming books, and she brought up the catalog, and the catalog was in Arabic, uh, of course, and then she directed me. Um, and I found the programming books and, and similar similar situation there, they are learning. Another example, this is uh, uh, which language? Korean. Korean. Anybody else? Chinese. And what is this book about? Any guesses what this book is about? Book is called A Byte of Python. It's Python programming. 
Okay, so the entire table of contents, there's no English, there's all, it's all Chinese. And interesting thing is that this book is written by an Indian who writes it in English. The Chinese translated to Chinese, they are learning programming that way. But the Indian never bothers to write the book in any Indian language. Right? Because according to uh, the Indians, uh, Indian languages are not good enough for science or for learning how to program. And imagine, you have languages like Chinese and Japanese that are actually such difficult languages in terms of incorporation of new terms because there are pictographic scripts at the, at the base of it, right? And so, whereas, you know, the, the, the Sanskrit-based Indian languages are so systematic, they're so scientific, even our whole alphabet system, our Varnamala, the sound production, the, the creation of new words, it is completely scientific and this is the language in which science happened for so long. And we are sort of discarding them as, as completely useless because English will save our souls. And uh, the other uh, question that people ask in India is, but what about jobs? Humko job kaun dega? Angrezi se hi job milta hai. Uh, sab multinational company hai, wo angrezi mein hi job dengi, to angrezi aapko job ke liye chahiye. Job ke liye angrezi kyu chahiye? Ye multinational company kaha se aari hai? If you look at the multinational companies, almost 800 of these companies in Asia, for instance, are coming from three countries, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. Now China is also, uh, this is a little old stat, now China is also coming uh, quite a bit ahead in these companies. All of these companies natively use their own languages. If you go to Samsung headquarters, they're going to be using Korean there. They're not using English. If you go to Toyota headquarters, they're using Japanese there, they're not using English. So. All of these uh, companies, multi, big multinational companies, they operate, I mean, uh, Samsung is the biggest electronics company, Toyota is one of the biggest car companies. They are all operating in their own languages. So when one of those goes to, let's say, Thailand, so Samsung goes to Thailand, then they are advertising in the Thai language, they are recruiting in the Thai language. So when they are job in Thailand, so, you Thai language, you Thai language, you in Thai language, you Samsung company in Germany, you will get the German language. When Thai company, Samsung company, in Korea, in Korea, in Japan, you will get the Japan you will get the Japanese language. So, you will get the Japanese English. So, this is a multinational company ke problem or a Bharat ki problem? This is a Bharat ki mindset that there is no multinational ko problem. Nahi hai. Multinational is local. Globalization implies localization. Globalization does not imply English. Globalization, a globalized economy is a highly localized economy. All of the multinational companies understand that they have to localize to each country that they go to, each region of the country they go to, in fact. I was in uh, Barcelona and I was very surprised to find that uh, their language is different than Spanish. They actually use Catalan. In fact, there's a big Catalan nationalist movement uh, that uh, I went and interacted with some people there. So they have their own Catalan language and the labels of the products and everything, they're very keen that they're in Catalan, even though it is a sub-region uh, of Spain. So people have a lot of pride in their language. And speaking of product labels, China find Walmart. Why did China find Walmart? Because Walmart was selling one item in their store in which the label in Chinese was slightly smaller than the label in English. Okay, and Walmart was fined for this because it is against the regulation. The label in Chinese must be bigger. If you go to India, you won't even find labels in Indian languages. Because, or we have that Countries are protecting their languages, countries are putting regulations in place. In France, you cannot sell software to the government of France unless the manual is in French, it is by law. In Canada, you cannot have a website that, that is a government website which, which, you know, if you go and sell software to the government, unless it's also in French, it has to be in English. French. So, countries are putting in place regulations to enhance and protect their languages. Right? Only in India, we are grateful that somebody is even coming to sell a product to us. It doesn't matter what language it is in. In fact, I've seen, you can go to, I was in Bangalore, I went to a store, where there was a towel in there, and it was only in Chinese. But we are ready to sell it, but there was no such thing in the whole store, in which it was written in Kannada. 
या हिंदी में लिखा हुआ था क्योंकि वो हमारी बैकवर्ड लैंग्वेजेस हैं उसको हम कैसे प्रयोग कर सकते हैं सिमिलरली मैं आई वाज गिविंग यू एन एग्जांपल ऑफ नोबेल प्राइज विनर्स दिस इज जस्ट अ क्विक लिस्ट आई आई ड्रू अप फ्रॉम द वेब ऑन जस्ट इन द लास्ट यू नो लेस देन 10 इयर्स 5 और 6 इयर्स द नोबेल प्राइज विनर्स who are japanese and working in japan <laughs> and who using japanese medium as their language nobel prize in physics and physiology of medicine you know all these all these uh, innovative uh, uh, developments are happening the problem now that is happening in india is this aaj main jab baat karta hu aur main mantriyon se bhi mila aur logon se mila ek baat kehte hain ki sab log chahte hain ki angrezi madhyam mein unka bachcha padhe gaon mein bhi log chah rahe hain ki angrezi madhyam mein bachcha padhe even even in the village children parents are sending children to english medium schools what is the consequence of this what is happening as a result firstly all of the scientific research to date has shown that children develop best in their mother tongue there is really no contraindication to this develop best by learning in their mother tongue secondly you are putting this child in a village into an english medium school the teacher barely knows english the child knows no english and you are trying to teach the child in english if you look at the absurdity of this the child has no environment to learn english his parents don't speak english his friends don't speak english doesn't know a word of english you put him in this english medium school the, the teacher's english is broken english barely the teachers themselves passed english they can maybe speak a few sentences but they say the medium of education has to be english the only the only term you can describe is you know the ministry of hrd human resource development but it should call itself the ministry of human resource destruction because it is destroying minds on a massive scale we are literally destroying children's minds on a massive scale i interviewed somebody maine abhi ek prakashan ghar i started a publication house in india garud prakashan aur uske liye main interview kar raha tha तो पहले मेरी प्रोग्रामर की इंटरव्यू ली और प्रोग्रामर की इंटरव्यू मैंने हिंदी में ली क्योंकि मुझको उसकी अंग्रेजी से कोई मतलब नहीं था उसकी प्रोग्रामिंग के तो वो वो भी कानपुर का था और हिंदी में उसका स्वाभाविक बोल रहा था तो मैंने आराम से बोला जो, जो भाषा तो हमको अच्छी लग रही है उसमें बोलो मेरे को समझाओ ये कैसे करते हैं वो कैसे करते हैं उसने अच्छी तरह समझा दिया उसको मैंने हायर कर लिया उसके बाद मुझे एक सेक्रेटरी की पोस्ट के लिए किसी को हायर करना था आई टू हायर अ सेक्रेटरी एंड वो उसको मैंने कहा कि बिकॉज ऑफ दिस सिचुएशन इन इंडिया बिकॉज ऑफ द सिस्टम यू विल ऑल्सो हैव टू रिप्लाई टू ई मेल्स इन इंग्लिश ऑल्सो हैव टू कॉरस्पॉन्ड इन इंग्लिश सो आई इंटरव्यू दैट गर्ल इन इंग्लिश एंड आई टोल्ड हर एंड हर रेजूमे सेट शी हैड डन ट्वेल्व इयर्स ऑफ इंग्लिश मीडियम स्कूलिंग इन ऊना नियर कानपुर सो मैंने उसको एक scenario i gave her a scenario i said okay this client has written to you he is very upset about this how would you respond can you write an email and i gave her the computer and said type it for me she spent 10 minutes and she could not write one sentence i i waited for 10 minutes in the end of 10 minutes okay so sir mere se hoga nahi to maine kaha are aap to 12 saal angrezi madhyam school mein padhe ho aapse ek sentence hindi angrezi mein likha jata hai ye 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 kya kaam hai to तब उसने वही बात कही जो मैंने बोली कह कह रही जी बोलते तो उसको अंग्रेजी माध्यम स्कूल है लेकिन अंग्रेजी तो वहां किसी को आती नहीं है <laughs> ना ना विद्यार्थी को आती है और ना पढ़ाने वाले को आती है तो वो अंग्रेजी माध्यम में वो बोलते भी है अंग्रेजी तो स्टूडेंट्स को नहीं समझ आता तो बोलना तो उनको हिंदी में पड़ता है तो वो इस तरह से खिचड़ी बोलते हैं अंग्रेजी और हिंदी की कि जो बाद में जो विद्यार्थी होता है उसको ना हिंदी आती है ना अंग्रेजी आती है उसको किसी भी भाषा में लिखना नहीं आता और ना कोई विषय समझ आता है so they are neither understanding math nor science nor are they able to communicate in any language as a result of the so called english medium schooling which is proliferating in the in the rural areas so it is a it is really a find of mass madness i mean this is the only way to describe it what are we what are we doing to an entire generation of this amazing civilization that produced so much knowledge and we are reducing them to cretins we are we are completely destroying uh, the entire generation of people so this is the consequence of it and as i said this is enormous scientific research you know unesco guidelines uh, you know 70 years ago in the 1950s 
uh, actually had uh, had stated that children learn best from the mother tongue. Even contemporary research, this was a research um, by the uh, Indian School of Business. Those those people did a fairly comprehensive study, and they went to Andhra Pradesh, and they uh, took uh, children in eighth standard, and they tested them. They tested eighth standard students. They tested Telugu medium students and English medium students. And the English medium students often came from a richer background than the Telugu medium students. So in some senses, because they had you know, better resources, you would expect that they would be uh, score higher in the exam. But they found that the Telugu medium student had much higher math and science scores than the English medium students. And if the math is a very good indicator of cognitive abilities. So what we are saying is that it's very clear that the cognitive abilities of these students are developing better when they are studying in their own language. So despite this enormous scientific research, there is this mad rush that is happening to, to English. So why is this mad rush happening? One other myth in India is that, first myth is that the people want English, right? We already, we already looked at that and we saw that this wasn't true because when given a choice, they read in their own language. The other myth is that the government is actually pushing Indian languages. So they said, you know, people want English, but government keeps pushing Hindi or government keeps pushing other languages. Does the government actually push other languages? If you look at the reality, the government completely pushes English in all areas. All of the institutes of higher education in India, which are funded by the government, are all English medium. All the IITs are only English medium. All the IIMs are only English medium. All the medical colleges are only English medium. All the AIMs and the higher institutes of medical sciences are only English medium. Not only that, you cannot use any Indian language in the Supreme Court of India. You can only use English. In most of the high courts of India, you cannot use the regional language of the state. You can only use English. There's only four high courts in which you can use Hindi. Other than that, in all of the high courts, you cannot use Tamil in Madras High Court. You cannot use Kannada in Karnatak High Court. I cannot imagine a greater sense of injustice than the fact that I cannot even argue my own case in my own language. And I don't understand, even if there's a lawyer representing me, I don't know if he's saying the truth or he's saying something wrong. I can't correct him later and say, no, no, you made a mistake. Right? So this is the so-called justice system. So the government at every, at every institute is propagating English. At the same time, it is doing a drama of preserving Indian languages. We have Hindi Divas. Kar diya ji. Divas is what is Jomrit. It is a Divas. 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 कुछ होता नहीं क्योंकि आपने व्यवस्था पूरी अंग्रेजीवादी बना दी ऊपर से नीचे तक आपने व्यवस्था अंग्रेजी की बना दी फिर आप हिंदी दिवस मना रहे हो तो जब तक भाषा का आर्थिक नाता वापस नहीं जोड़ा जाएगा जब तक आदमी नहीं ये कहेगा कि मैं मेरे को उच्च से उच्च नौकरी चाहिए मुझे अगर इंजीनियरिंग पढ़नी है मुझे अगर मेडिकल करना है मुझे अगर सी करना है मेरे को अगर आर्मी में जाना है आर्मी का बड़ा अच्छा एग्जाम्पल है दी आर्म फोर्स ऑफ इंडिया इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बी एन ऑफिसर you have to interview in English. If you want to enlist as a Jawan, you can interview in Indian languages. Okay. So it is like there is I call it language apartheid. It is it is such a clear case of linguistic apartheid that we've set up. We've said that the native languages are low and English is high. So where does the status in society come from? It comes from government policy. Right? Tomorrow is government imagine tomorrow. If we were if we were graduating top class scientists who are studying in in, in uh, Marathi, right, and they are, they are doing their all their education in Marathi, status would rise automatically, yeah. right? Um, immediately the status of the language would rise. If we, if we were having top medical doctors who are practicing in in Hindi, the status would rise automatically, right? So the status is being kept down by the government policy, which is causing uh, this this consequence. So one of the things, so the, uh, the new edition of my book, um, so this person actually heard one of the talks like this. I, I was in Delhi and he's a, he's a doctor at uh, Harvard Medical School. And he came up to me and he's a Bengali and he said, uh, ki, aap 
मैं अभी अब बंगाली में एक न्यूरो साइंस की किताब लिखूंगा तो वन वन ऑफ द थिंग्स यूज डूइंग दिस रिसर्च एंड व्हाट ही फाइंड्स इज दैट द दैट द प्राइमरी लैंग्वेज द फर्स्ट लैंग्वेज दैट द चाइल्ड एक्वायर्स काइंड ऑफ फॉर्म्स एन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम फॉर द ब्रेन ओके दिस इज द लैंग्वेज इन व्हिच वी स्टार्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड वर्ड्स सो द ब्रेन हैज अ नेटवर्क अराउंड इट व्हिच सेज दिस इज हाउ वर्ड्स आर अंडरस्टूड दिस इज हाउ द सेमांटिक स्ट्रक्चर इज क्रिएटेड बेस्ड ऑन दैट लैंग्वेज सो when you disrupt that learning in primary and you say no no you now have to learn another language when that structure isn't fully formed yet right is that you you really cause a cognitive dissonance so when one of the other things is found is that the language the knowledge one requires in one language even if there is a forgetting at some level that in the subconscious level that knowledge remains but when you are acquiring it immediately in a foreign language then that doesn't happen in fact when you acquire your language well then it is easier to acquire a second language because you have a structure to understand language you you your brain now has has a ability to deal with one language and then it can extrapolate it to other languages right but when you're disrupting that that learning methodology in the primary level then it is inevitable that your cognitive abilities are going to decline because your brain is not fully developed yet so this is again ongoing research he is actually looking at the biological uh, you know neural systems here but uh, this is a uh, something worth reflecting on again beyond my uh, uh, you know certainly beyond my uh, research abilities or uh, anything i'm doing but as i said many 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 people from different fields have to come together there's a we have to create the economic model we have to say what is the cost to india of converting an entire population what is the cost of relearning in another language you know Bill, a billion people you want to convert to a different language is that more cost effective or translating 10000 books right so you have we have to look in all these areas and say what is the what is the cost uh, analysis and then the final uh, i'm not going to spend too much time on it because it's much more uh, detail in the book which is what is the solution so when i give this talk a lot of people say ki ji bharat mein to itni sari bhashaye hain आप जो उदाहरण दे रहे हो उसमें एक एक दो भाषाएं जिन देशों में उनमें तो ये चल जाएगा लेकिन भारत में इतनी सारी भाषाएं और भारत में कैसे चलेगा तो इंडिया है सो मेनी लैंग्वेजेस तो मैं उनको बोलता हूँ कि अच्छा ये बताओ कि भारत की जनसंख्या कितनी है वट इज द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ इंडिया में भी ओके वट इज द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ यूरोप पॉपुलेशन ऑफ एफ्रीका about a billion so india is also bigger than the entire continent of africa so india is a country and india is of continental scale in terms of its human resources so something which is on a continental scale you cannot try to shove one language onto the people okay and india has always been a multilingual lingual civilization language has never been a barrier india has always been a multilingual civilization we have always taken one idea ramayan comes in one language this spreads to another language somebody develops it that idea is re recaptured kashmir shamanism spreads from one corner then goes into another becomes more people are exchanging ideas there is a huge interchange this huge exchange of ideas and language is not a barrier to that exchange people are uh, having this exchange all over the place so the model for india has to follow something similar which is successful which is the european union model in the european union the union government supports all 24 languages as official languages what does that mean you can go to the website of the european union and you will find that all of the languages are available as a selection in the website and this is by their law by the european language rules you must have all outbound communication and inbound communication in all of the 24 languages not only that you can write an email to them in any of those 24 languages and they will respond to you in the same language you can call them in any of the 24 languages and you will be routed to the appropriate call center 
and you can talk to somebody in your own language. So this is 24, India has 22 optional languages. Why is it that the union government is very happy to take income tax from people in Kerala but is not willing to have the income tax officer speak to them in Malayalam? If you're going to take tax from me, I have a right to at least speak in my own language, right? So, but the government says, no, no, you have to either speak in English and Hindi, and the Hindi support is actually again, it's like a matrati. No, it's, it's actually not really sufficient to do any work, but they have checked the box that we are also supporting Hindi. But in actuality, it's only English. So you can actually only file your taxes in English. Uh, in fact, GST, this whole thing came out. It is not supporting any of the Indian languages. You can only do it in English. So, all of the systems of the state are only operating in English and they must operate in, if it is indeed a government, if the central government indeed belongs to all the regions of India, then it must support all of those languages as optional languages. So, somebody who has a query about their income tax and they want to write a query in Tamil, they should be able to talk to somebody in Tamil, they should be able to have the query answered. And in fact, this problem is easier to solve today than it was at independence. Because today technology can enable this much more easily. Right? Then even in the court system, I know of a company that is doing automatic translation of the legal domain documents from English into Indian languages and vice versa. Why is it possible? Because, uh, you know, for those uh, familiar with computer science, when you restrict the semantic space, so you are only saying not all kinds of English, but just the legal document English, then it is easier, uh, I'll just come back, uh, just easier to translate uh, in that specific domain. Okay, so they are achieving fairly high fidelity translations. So it is very easy for, for the court system to operate in multiple languages. You push a button, you can see it in another language, right? And there can be some manual intervention, there can be staff, it will increase jobs in Indian languages when you create the staff. So India has to operate by respecting all languages rather than by saying that we have to privilege one language over, over the other. And also it has to make massive investments in translation. So language requires investment, just like you have infrastructure investment, you're investing in roads, you're investing in railways, you're investing in energy production, you have to invest in knowledge production in your language, which means translation is part of that investment. If you look at the scale of investment India is making in infrastructure in other areas, with the scale of investment India is making in languages, right? It is making absolutely no investment in language. Balki mein kisi ne bataya ki ji engineering ki to padhai ho rahi thi wo Hindi mein lekin chali nahi. Maine kaha kahan ho rahi thi? Kare wo ek Atal Bihari Vishnu Vidyalay hai Madhya Pradesh mein. Unhone Hindi mein engineering padhane ki koshish ki lekin wo fail ho gaya experiment. To main gaya wahan pe. Maine kaha dekhte hain kya kar rahe hain. Atal Bihari Vajpayee National University. Named after Vajpayee ji, you know, such a huge, you know, uh, uh, endeavor. What is the total budget of the university annual budget? Five crores, five crore rupees. High school, you cannot run in five crore rupees today in India. Okay, and so they gave that university a budget of five crore rupees. IIT's budgets are in the 500 crore to 1000 crore ranges. Right, all of the, if you look at the JNU budget, look at all these universities, heavily funded. So they start a Hindi university, they give it a five crore budget, they make sure it is set up to fail. Because then they can say, we tried this experiment, it hasn't worked. Okay, so we don't need to try this again. In fact, you have to do the exact opposite. You have to resource the Indian language universities with twice the amount of resources. Because they have to do, a, we have to, uh, we are turning the tide, right? So we have to invest in language resources, we have to invest in training, we have to do all this work. So, if you have to do an experiment, you have to do a serious experiment. You have to really say, okay, I'm going to set up eminent institutes of learning in medicine, in engineering, in, in, in business, and I'm going to fund them, resource them adequately. Let there be at least one eminent institute in each language uh, uh, that we have in India. And then you see what happens 10 years later, funded for, 10, for 20 years, right? Then, then one can say, okay, what happened, what happened, what did succeed, did not succeed. But doing a half hour job, and I'll give you the example of the Chinese, this is Andrew Nag is a professor in Stanford in computer science, and he is in machine learning, and he was, he was very impressed at not only are the Chinese translating all the books, not only are they translating all the journal articles, 
even a self-published journal article that was put in some technical blog, within 24 hours the Chinese had a translation of that machine learning article. This is the kind of, it reminds me of Arabs paying the weight of gold for translators, right? You have to invest seriously in the translation project. Many of the ministers tried to create influence first, you know, in, I wrote my first book on this in 2014 actually. I had a great hope because the government was changing and I was thinking finally we're going to have a government that care about our civilizational goals. Unfortunately, I've been disappointed. There's almost no action at all that the government has taken uh, for Indian languages. In fact, there are many actions uh, in the opposite direction. Uttar Pradesh has just announced it's converting 5,000 primary schools from Hindi medium to English medium. So they are actually setting up, as I said, a massive human resource destruction project uh, on a scale that has never even been done before. So then I said, okay, so two options, either we, either we wring our hands and say, well, we tried and nothing happened, or we continue to do some work. And uh, you know, there's a very uh, strong sanskar which says, don't expect the government to do stuff, change the society, right? Create awareness in society. So what, I have a strong believer in Samaj Shakti, in the strength of society to change things. And so I started this small publication house called Garuda. Garuda is a Vahana. And the, the idea of Garuda is to bring science and technology books in Indian languages. So we have started, we are starting, actually we have a professor in IIT Kanpur, Professor H.C. Verma, who wrote a very uh, famous book, Concept of Physics, which is used uh, um, um, pretty much across the board in the 12th standard and first year engineering physics. So um, he uh, uh, had uh, heard one of my talks at the IITs and then um, he himself had gone to Hindi medium. And now he's bringing out Concept of Physics in Hindi. Not only that, under Garuda, he's now bringing out his quantum physics book in Hindi. So now we're going to have the quantum physics book in Hindi. And we have a, a medical doctor working with us who's going to bring a pharmacology book in Hindi. And we, our first aim is to create a, a full engineering curriculum and a full medical curriculum in, in, in Hindi and other Indian languages to start with. So this is, a, this is the Garuda, Garuda Udan project, I call it. Um, and this is one of the the um, hopes in doing this tour is to uh, is to uh, bring this to people's awareness and and hoping for resources and uh, of many different kinds. There is so much in this room. Like somebody can have an expertise in a subject. They can say, "I'll write a book." Right? Somebody says, "I'll write a book." We will find the money to fund it and to publish it and to print it and all that. Somebody says, "Well, I, I don't have time to write a book. Maybe I can I can make a donation." Or somebody says, well, I don't, have to, I don't have the resources to make a donation, maybe I can spread the idea, right? So all of those things are possible. Maybe I can buy a book and maybe I can give the book to three other people so that at least people are out of the myth. So however, however one, can, one can contribute if the project appeals to you, because this can only be possible through the support of Samaj. This is not a one person or even a one generation project. It is going to happen through systematic efforts across a couple of generations where people really say, okay, we have to make this change. We are on a path which is civilizationally destructive, which is economically destructive, and which is really leading to nowhere. It's not going to help re revitalize our civilization or get back to the knowledge society we were. So the idea is that we have a seed, seed that uh, creates the first set of books. <clears throat> from that first set of books, all the resources that, that Garuda gets from selling the books will be in reinvested in creating the, the next set of books. So the idea is to create this virtual cycle where some seed funding is there to create the first set and then we continue to use that to propagate the first, because there's an infinite amount of things that can be translated. That project, this project is, this Odan has no limit. Uh, so we can, we can continue to invest and continue to grow so that from the society we have a response. The government has created the situation and from society we have a strong response saying we care about our languages. Because sometimes when I go talk to the government, I say, okay, start an engineering college in, in Hindi or in, or in uh, Gujarati. They say, Are, where are the books? Who's going to teach it? How is it possible to teach without books? So I said, this books problem is solvable. <laughs> this we can do. Okay, it is a solvable problem. There's a process that, that we can put in place to solve this problem. Now, once the book problem, 
because the book is actually very important. If I have, let's say, even if I haven't studied computer science in Hindi, if I had a series of 10 books which is data structures, algorithms, and working the core ideas of computer science, I can stand in front of a class and I can teach that course in Hindi. Because the book will help me teach that course. So putting those books together again at a very high quality and a very high standard is one very important step that we can we can take. And that will start this virtuous cycle, uh, the wheels to turn. So there's a couple of, uh, so the one on the left was my, my first edition, Anirazi Madhyam Ka Brahmjal. And on this trip itself, in fact, yesterday the books were shipped to Sunnyvale. And I first saw this book, the second edition, right book. So it's actually, a, in, in fact, a pre-release in a way because it's not on Amazon, it's not anywhere. But I have a few copies if people want to buy and want to buy for their friends, uh, please do so. So this is the second edition, which is, the, which is now available of the book, The English Medium Myth. You have both Hindi and English? No, I only have the English one right now because uh, this one just got printed the English. And the Hindi one is printed in India and I don't have very many copies. I only have a couple of them at home right now. So this one is, is in... Uh, but we are going to bring it out in six languages in August. In fact, people have volunteered to do this. So I'm getting uh, responses from different... Like somebody just uh, volunteered and translated into Kannada. Somebody is volunteering and translating into Marathi. So all these people are just coming and saying, no, no, we want this book uh, in, in my, we, want, we want the Marathi people to read it, we want people to read it. And so that's another place, you know, if, you, if there's a language um, that, uh, that, you, that you are very comfortable in, Telugu, something else, Bengali, uh, that we uh, have not yet translated, please, you can also volunteer to translate uh, the books. And uh, I'm very active on Twitter, if you want to reach me, at Sankrant and also on Gmail. Uh, and uh, we put an alpha version of the Garuda Uran project, grpr.in slash Uran. And that, that is a series of right now 10 computer science books that we are targeting. Um, and now we're going to crowd, start crowdsourcing the funding for that. So as a book gets funded, then we put it in the pipeline. Some we have already started funded by our own resources like the quantum physics and the medical the pharmacology one. But the idea is to keep expanding that list and, and have people be, somebody says I, I want to contribute as an author, somebody says I want to contribute money, somebody says I want to um, want to just spread the You're idea. You're publishing the book by Vivek uh, uh, Agniotri. Yes, yes, so Garuda is doing two things. One is that it is bringing, uh, its focus is Indian civilization and Indian languages. So we are also bringing out books in English that enhance our civilizational narrative. So anybody who wants to write a book in English is also welcome. We are coming out with Vivek Agnihotri's book, Urban Axles, uh, which is uh, quite a uh, uh, sort of uh, throwing a stone at this whole academic citadel, which is controlled by a certain faction, uh, and, and uh, which is very intolerant to other ideas. And this book, uh, I'm proud to announce, Garuda is a, is a startup publishing house, but this group is already in the top 50 in Amazon in India. So within days of its release, we've already reached the top 50. So there's clearly a need for telling our stories. The Garuda platform is a Vahana, and the Vahana is for our stories, for our narrative. Because right now, all the narrative has been constructed for us, has been given to us. So the idea is to, to finally have a platform for our narrative, uh, so both in English and, and in Indian languages. Thank you. Thank you very much.